Hi everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to another Sky Update from UTA Planetarium. My name is Levan Surdemir, UTA Planetarium Director. And Jim Bader is with me. Jim Bader is Program Coordinator. Definitely, yeah. We have an exciting show. Last week, we, we, we have a promise from last week, right? We did, we did. We told them we would talk about um, the North Star? The North Star. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about North Star. Yeah, North Star is amazing. And uh, uh, there is a misconception about North Star too. Uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, pointing uh, bright stars in the sky and asking if that's the North Star. Uh, well, unfortunately, North Star is a little bit more disappointing than that uh, because North Star is not very bright star. But we'll talk about why we call that North Star. But in the meantime, if you have any questions uh, or any comments, you can use chat to ask us questions. Uh, and let's start with the, the night sky. So uh, the sun rises from east direction and during the day goes into sky uh, and then reaches to the west direction and then finally sets and if you look at the, the sky during night you would see the stars actually doing the same thing they are rising from the east direction and reaching some uh, altitude in the sky and then they are going to the west direction and this progress this rotation of the night sky happens all the time this is the main reason of sunrise moonrise planet rise and star rise and that's the same reason for settings as well so uh, our ancestors uh, thousands of years ago noticed that uh, motion the motion of the stars and we call that daily motion of the stars here is i see great orion constellation by the way and just like the stars of Orion, like any other stars, they are rising from the east direction and they rotate around the sky. So what's the, what's the cause of this rotation? Well, uh, for thousands of years, again, the, uh, the astronomers of the time, the, the ancient astronomers thought that, or they just came up with different models. Some said, well, the entire sky or entire universe is rotating around our planet. Uh, but then uh, later in the, the, the history, uh, we came to the understanding that actually um, the universe is not the one rotating around us. Uh, the, the main cause of this daily motion is actually Earth is rotating around its axis. So, and after we uh, also understood that Earth is a round object like a sphere, uh, when the, 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 our sphere rotates around it, the entire universe or entire sky will look like a rotating sphere. So about spheres, every sphere have two or one axis to spin around and this axis makes two poles. One is at the north side and one is at the south side. So we are in the Northern Hemisphere in the United States, being in Texas. Uh, we are in the, the northern part of the sphere, northern part of the planet. So that means we will see the north side and the south pole. The south side is uh, going to be always and always under the horizon. So how can I find this uh, north point or north pole then well it's easy because when we look at the stars um, and we imagine the, the coordinate system uh, as just we uh, draw in the sky um, well uh, when we look at when we are trying to find the the the, the axis point or the pole point of that uh, we are using stars as reference and fortunately and just fortunately there is a star called polaris or the north star is sitting very close to that the point we are looking for and this is just a coincidence there is nothing special about the star here is i find north star always i find big dipper first and this constellation is the big dipper it's very easy to find because all the seven stars of the big dipper are very bright and it really does look like a big spot in the sky so 
these two stars of the Big Dipper, I like calling them guide stars because they guide me to where I would like to go. And here I'm doing that. So I'm pointing the, my first guide star and I draw the line, imaginary line to the second guide star. And I go and do this five more times in the sky or just simply with my eye extending the line. And that takes me to the North Star. North Star is this one. Polaris is this one. It's a very tiny star. It's as a star, not tiny, but it is so far away and so dim in the sky. So it is not easy to find just by looking at the sky right away. You always find it from the Big Dipper. Easy. So North Star happens to be the brightest star of the Little Dipper constellation, which is right here. And Little Dipper, as you will see, is the brightest star uh, or just the, the opposite version of the Big Dipper. So it is very easy to find too. Well, after you find the North Star, so uh, you can find the North direction uh, very easy. And once you find the north direction and you just uh, say you, this direction must be north. You face yourself the north star and you find north direction. And you can argue that. You can use a lot of different technology here. You can just pull up your smartphone and probably it will show you your directions. And, uh, 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 but this is, this is just a natural way of finding north star. When you look at the north star and the, the, the surrounding stars, they will be doing this type of motion through the night. Uh, sometimes professional photographers are taking such pictures, showing star trails because they are using very long exposure time. Uh, so uh, because, again, we talked about the sky look like being a sphere that provides us a great coordinate system uh, and this sphere rotates and North Star is being in the axis point of that motion. So entire sky or all the stars will look like rotating around the North Star. So that's pretty But we cool noticed to something, Levant. The North Star looks like a worm right now. Why, why is the North Star <laughs> moving? Well, because the, again, I mean, this is uh, something, uh, the, the, the photography technique, right? Star will never look like uh, making trails like this. And uh, because they just uh, leave their footprint as you increase the exposure time, North Star is doing the same thing. Again, when I say North Star happens to be very close to the North Point, but not on exactly on the North Point. Because it is not exactly on, it will also move a little bit from the north point and that will make this type of pattern at the center if you are doing uh, the sky photography like this yeah it's always amazing to take these pictures and north star can give us a lot of information about uh, the the whereabouts of us so if we think about uh, the people you know, uh, traveled across the world before the invention of airplanes, uh, they were uh, tr uh, able to travel from one continent to another. For example, they were able to take their ships off of India and come to the United States or, or from England and to the United States and back and forth. So that's a long distance. An ocean is, um, uh, you know, usually the, like there is no visual reference point. If you're in the middle of the ocean, imagine yourself, uh, you are, uh, you know, riding in a ship that doesn't have uh, modern GPS or, or electronic navigation. And your only visual reference about where you are going can be the stars. So uh, you have to use the stars as a navigation devices how how can is it is that possible how can it be possible to use stars for navigation well this is actually uh this had been done for a long time and uh the, the, the this type of concept is still being taught in um in flight academies in in schools and it is called celestial navigation yes you can travel by using stars i know some pilots airline pilots are still trained to navigate using stars if they lose the electronic navigation systems and they, they happen to be, let's say, um, uh, far out in the ocean. Astronauts, too. I mean, they, they train astronauts in planetariums uh, for celestial navigation. That, that is true. 
So, uh, Jim, do you know how to navigate through stars? Uh, if you, in case, in, in case you lost your way in the middle of, let's say, um, nowhere, uh, were you able to find at least your um, directions? I would say that it depends how much light pollution there is. <laughs> <laughs> if there's very little light pollution or light, uh, yes, definitely. But the question is usually, you know, let's let's say you find North Star. Um, you can only find North Star using or North Direction using North Star. Mm -hmm. Are you able to find the other direction? So uh, I think the South is out of question. The, the opposite direction is South. But how about East and West? How how can you tell which is which? Is there a West Star or East Star that you can tell? Definitely not a West Star or East Star, as as you know, those change constantly due to daily motion um but you could look north and know that west if you're looking north west should be to your left and uh east should be to your right actually my left is your right yes. on, on the screen <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it yeah. is the opposite um thing. but yeah it, yes you're exactly right this is going to be really confusing because this guy is behind you and yeah you're looking north right now even though what we see behind you is south <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, it tells a lot of things. Uh, let's take a look at another uh, function of the North Star. And that is, uh, okay, you, the North Star can tell you uh, the North direction, but is that all? Is that the only thing North Star is able to tell? It can actually tell a little bit more than that. If you measure the height of the North Star in degrees, uh, what I mean is uh, your horizon, let's take your horizon as a zero degree and the highest point in the sky, 90 degrees. So uh, the height of the North Star equals to the geographical latitude we are sitting in. Uh, now, if you do that for Arlington, Texas, you will find something like 33 degrees because we are at the 33 degree latitude. If you go to a different city in the United States or a different country like Canada, you will see the North Star is going higher and higher in the sky. Of course, uh, you know, we said North Star's location is not going to change during night much. It's going to change just a tiny bit. So this measurement will always give you the ge geographical latitude. So by, just by looking at the North Star, you can tell exactly where you are do we want to show them what it looks like? Uh, I mean, the change. Uh, let's just, we could go to yeah. the equator first and yeah. then come for, back. Yeah. For example, let's go south. Let's travel south. As we travel south, we should expect the opposite way. The north star should go down. And if this is you at are, the equator. Or we are sitting on the equator, uh, north star will be exactly on the horizon. So probably we will not be able to see it because it will fall behind a tree or something. And we maybe. could go to... Back home, if you go to New York City, but, Buffalo, wherever. But yeah, let's go to the New York City, one of my favorite locations. Let's go to the Times Square. Of course, <laughs> we won't be able to see North Star from Times Square because it's going to be too bright. Uh, but uh, North Star should be at that height, roughly about 42 to 43 degrees. How about if we go to the North Pole? What happens? We, we can only I know, see... Uh, it's not Christmas time yet, right, to go to the North Pole? Uh, but let's say we jumped in North Pole Express, as in the story, and uh, traveled to the North Pole, then we should see the North Star the, at the highest point in the sky, which we call Zenith. Uh, Zenith is the name of the highest point in the sky, so North Star should be at the Zenith point, and it will be, the entire sky will be just rotating around pretty much like, you know, you're in the planetary with all the stars circling around you. That is going to be such a nice place. <clears throat> just like that. And uh, at the North Pole, there is going to be one thing uh, interesting. No stars will be rising and no stars will be setting. So all the stars will be just circling around and around and you will not see the sun until the month of uh, March and the, in, in March the uh, sun will rise on the horizon and will remain in the sky for the 
the rest of the season. Lumia has a very good question. Well, we, she has some other points we can get to in just a minute, but we mm -hmm. definitely should reach out to this question right here. Okay. Can you read the question? Oh, yeah, definitely. It is, uh, what um, is the instrument used to measure the North Star's height? That's a good question. So, so I'm using a computer. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can eyeball. It certainly gives us a clue. But if you would like to be precise, like if you are doing a celestial navigation, eyeballing is not going to be enough. We are, uh, then we need more accuracy. And that accuracy can be done with an instrument, astronomical instrument called sextant. This is a sextant. Of course, this is a miniature version. The actual uh, working one is a little bit more bigger than that. But what sextant does, it has a tiny telescope on it. So this telescope, uh, goes through uh, some of the mirrors and filters and filters are just uh, if you have like you know cloudy sky or uh, some uh, light pollution to, to elim eliminate filters have not much importance over here for the functionality but basically the sextant have uh, uh, the some a combination of mirrors and lenses over here so when you look through the sextant uh, you align uh, North Star in one of the lenses and you look through a telescope and you turn a knob over here until you, the two images merge. When two images merge, that means you are um, looking at uh, uh, the North Star with your telescope and the horizon with your one of the, the the lens combinations so that will give you the separation of the north star and the horizon in degrees and that will be very very accurate so this the, the instrument is called sextant and it is used to measure the, the the elevation of the the north star from the horizon that's a very cool instrument um, I, I can actually show a picture of somebody using a full-size one mm -hmm. if uh, if that would help much um it, at least give you an idea of what they look like in practice. Let me pop this behind Levent so that you guys can see them both. And uh, here, here's somebody. This is from, mm -hmm. um, from a sailing website, but you can see somebody using an actual one instead of a display version. Okay. I mean, I think this is uh, for just to show how to use a sextant because yeah. uh, you, they are usually using uh, this instrument uh, during the, the, the sunrise or sunset or at night, right? So in the, just in the, using in the it during the day, day like seems this, like a you bad won't choice. Be see, yeah. in the, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little trick. What's little... that bright thing over there? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's not really funny. I shouldn't laugh. All right, so um, uh, geographical latitude we can find, but th is there enough to find, uh, let's say, where we are? Uh, so if I see North Star 42 degree up, uh, can I tell I'm in the New York City, Jim? Um, Don't no. I need more information yeah, on that? you need to know, are you west or east or, um, I mean, New York City is mm -hmm. not too far. From, I mean, in terms of difference from, like, Paris, am I wrong? I think they're very similar latitudes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... Sky looks the same. Okay, we need more information, right? Like when you pull your digital map on your phone, you will uh, find out that when you drop a pin somewhere, uh, it will tell you uh, two numbers. Uh, those are the coordinates of the exact location you drop the pin. And one of the number is called the latitude, which we can find using North Star. Another one is called longitude. The longitude is also needed to pinpoint your location on Earth. So how can we find uh, the longitude? Using North Star? No, we are not using North Star this time. This is a little bit more complicated and require more information because uh, the astronomers and navigators are using some of the bright stars, some of the known bright stars that known visible at that night and they will make a pass of meridian. Meridian is another line. Actually, we drew that line on the North Star but um, uh, that, uh, like, the, if you just uh, draw a line from north to south in the sky, uh, and it goes from all the way from north and all the way to the south, that is called meridian. 
So uh, we are looking at the, some passages of the, the bright stars of the meridian and when they are on the meridian, we are using catalogs and probably now the digital libraries to find out their passage times and we look at our clock uh, and compare them, do a little bit calculations and uh, the corrections and then we can find longitude too, so, uh, the longitude too, using bright stars again. I mean, the, the longitude little, it requires a little bit more work, but the latitude is very easy. All right, so um, uh, this is our Earth, and we talked about this spin axis, uh, and this side, well, we are located on the north side of this sphere, and here this axis is pointing, if we just extend the line from here, it will go all the way to the North Star Polaris. But here's a problem. When we look at the historical records, for example, like how far can we how far can we go in the history, Jim? Do you know? And like, I mean, in our in our program, we can go. For, no, no. I mean, for example, uh, you know, three hundred years, four hundred years. We know what happened three hundred, four hundred years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what happened four hundred years ago? Four hundred years ago. Uh, Somebody I mean, invented. Uh, not invented, actually. This is different. Thing. Oh, okay. You're, you're saying you said yeah. Uh, you're Somebody about discovered Galileo this. Galilei. Yeah. Somebody discovered a to... telescope, right? Yeah. Four hundred about... years ago. Is it? Is it long time? A long time. I mean, the, nobody survives four hundred years. It's a long time, but uh, for the, the history of that, let's go a little bit further in the history. So, for example, we can go back to one thousand years, two thousand, but we can go as far as five thousand years almost in the history of uh, technology and science. Uh, because those are the first, uh, the written records came up. And one of the first we consider as a written record is the drawings on the walls of the, the pyramids in Egypt. Have you ever been, Jim, to the pyramids? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> I, I have not either. I have not. I mean, I've seen a lot of pictures of them, videos and documentaries. But yeah, I haven't been to the pyramids. But what they say is... On the walls of the drawings, they identified and marked North Star. They drew constellations as we know today. Uh, for example, there's an Orion's drawing, and apparently the, the scientists and observers of that time uh, looked at the sky and saw Orion constellation, Big Dipper constellation, Little Dipper constellation, and also they did the marking on one of the stars. That star, they call it North Star, uh, but it is it is different than the North Star we know of today. Uh, it is it is not the Polaris. It is not the the, the Big Dipper's uh, extension star. Uh, they mark different star, uh, and uh, to to be precise, if you would like to see which star they marked, uh, remember if you use these, I call these two stars guide stars because they guided me all the way to the North Star Polaris over here. Uh, the, the, in the drawings of the, the, the pyramids, uh, they used these two stars almost um, and extended. And over here, there is another star that we call, oh, I went too far. Yeah, I went all the way to the Little Dipper. So they used these two stars and uh, they marked even a dimmer, dimmer star over here. So. Uh, we can conclude that the, the astronomers and the observers of the time, the sky knowledge was weak or wrong, so they did not know this star is the North Star. Instead, they marked this star the North Star. And maybe somebody showed them how the guide stars are used. Maybe they mixed up the guide stars. What do you think, Jim? It's um, easy to mix up the guide stars, right? Yeah, I mean, it's possible you could mix the guide stars up, but I think there was something else at play. I mean, i got to be honest. Uh, we saw that the axis points in a certain direction, but the real uh -huh. question is, does the axis always point in the same direction for forever? Or we'll just say over a few thousand years. Uh, well, your argument requires more work to prove. My, my argument is very easy. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I'm just considering that uh, the, the knowledge, astronomy knowledge was very poor. Maybe they didn't have right measurement tools and they just pointed wrong star as a North Star. 
How about that? It's very uh, easy, Jim. I mean, let's I, go with the easy way. I, I mean, I see you. You could make that anecdot anecdotally, but um, <laughs> have we have we witnessed the North Star moving at all? Well, uh, or or um, the the pole have yeah. we have we witnessed it in modern times? Moving? Okay, yeah, actually, you know, the the, the way you uh, describe it, Jim, this is how science works. The science doesn't work as the way I say. Like, let's say, or let's assume, let's consider what I think is not science. Uh, if if I say this way, okay, um, Jim has a uh, statement. Jim says, well, how about maybe this pole is moving across the sky by time uh, and not that uh, the, the astronomers of Egypt uh, done wrong observations. Uh, and I, you know, I said the, the, the different thing, but let's see and let's test if uh, Jim is true because Jim's statement is testable. My statement, my uh, intentionally wrong statement was not testable. But uh, because we cannot just go back to at that time, and unless we have the, the you know the, the famous uh, DeLorean time machine, and go <laughs> back into five thousand years ago and grab uh, one of the astronomers from their arm and say, "Hey, um, how did you find North Star? Just show me." Uh, this is not possible. This is not testable. But what Jim says is testable, and we will test it. So um, we're just going to go back in time. That's what you want to do. Okay, let's go back five thousand years in time. We don't have DeLorean, but we have Digistar, which is an incredible software to uh, point us the, the 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 sky back in history. And when we go back, let's see what happens. Right, we're, we're at the year 1000. All right, so we are moving very fast in time. It's, uh, we're year zero right now. Year That's zero. Constant. Okay. Um, Let's go it. year minus, which there was no uh, definition of year, year in, the, in the group. <laughs> minus 1000. Minus 2000. Minus 2,812. And we are pointing star to one now. Star. Right, let's try our they, multiple, uh, two. Well, uh, the Egypt astronomers were, were right. And your uh, statement was certainly right. From using these two guide stars, when I find this little star, Thuban, uh, they called it North Star because the Earth's pointing axis, Earth's rotation axis, was pointing this direction back in time. So what happened 5,000 years? In 5,000 years, uh, the, the point, not the star, but the point, uh, the north point of our coordinate sphere is shifted, shifted in time, and today, at the zero point, uh, this is zero uh, from the difference from our year, by the way. This is like uh, minus 5,000. Uh, we are here at this time. And if I switch to this time, uh, well, the North Star the, or North Point is right now over here. And by coincidence, again, just by coincidence, we have a star over here. Well, 2,000 years ago, uh, the North Pole was empty in the sky and well it will continue on its movement and this is not happening in the short time uh, we won't be able to notice any movement in our lifetime even if our kids and grandkids won't notice anything the north star or polaris will still be in the sky and called north star but how about 1000 years from now if let's say somebody watches our video 1000 years from now which uh, i Think the internet will not go away uh, so they can just watch this video and uh, look at the, the history and say oh, oh there was a star and they call it North Star 1000 years ago so 1000 years ago North Pole will be here 2000 3 4000 and 5000 here it will be here um, and now, then we have lined up a pretty cool if you if you slide out of the way and show the North Pole right now this is uh, 12,000 years from now 
uh -huh. we're very close to another super bright star which is vega well if you would like to stick around another 12,000 years you can celebrate vega being the north star which is very bright star so uh anyway this entire uh, circle completes in 27,000 years so that's a very slow motion and it is caused by the earth's rotation axis being uh, in wobble motion but that wobble one wobble takes 27,000 years it's a very slow motion so i have a question levin i'm gonna i'm gonna pop in so watch your head there yeah. um if if the position of the north star changes would that have an effect on all the other stars and what stars or groups of stars or i could say constellations you could see from mm -hmm. different portions of the the earth yeah. and and then yeah well we consider the sky uh, or the relative positions of the stars static that means unchanged for a reasonable amount of time and that reasonable amount of time we said this uh, north star or wobble completes 27,000 years right so 27,000 years is actually nothing uh, if we just think about uh, the, the the shape of the constellations now of course uh, nothing is static in the universe everything is moving everything is in motion and the stars in the constellations are also in motion in different directions in different speeds that means by time the constellations will change their shape constellations will completely dissolve new constellations will uh, arrive but that is going to take uh, millions of years and 27000 years is nothing but of course that 27000 dollars has an impact because we said like we are we have a coordinate system we, this is all how it started right we said the, the stars are rising from east, the stars are uh, sitting from west direction, and everything around us seems like in a spherical motion. And we have, uh, we, we uh, address or we find addresses of the constellations based on this sphere because we just can describe this sphere with the degrees, degree marks. Uh, this is our core astronomical coordinates. So right. what happens is, uh, from in five thousand, even in five thousand years, North Star, the North Pole, being slightly shifted uh, from Theban to Polaris today, it also shifts the entire sphere, entire coordinate system. That means if we mark a constellation at, let's say, ten degrees five thousand years ago, it is at different degrees today. I mean the, the the relative shape shape has not changed but the coordinate system shifted slightly and that shift and especially i would like to take your attention to this ring called ecliptic the ecliptic is the path of the sun the sun follows this path in the sky through year and uh, and there are constellations across this ring, and there wait, are... Wait, wait, Levent, careful where you're going there. There are people who depend on those constellations to be in their particular places on the day that they were born. People depend on constellations? How can that be possible, Jim? That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> I don't have the answer for that. Let's talk about, you know, how people can be dependent on constellations. This oh. is getting into the realm of astrology, Levent, and we're, we're running out of time today, so. Well, I have no intention to go into the astrology talk either because, you know, I, I have not read any horoscope today. I don't know what's going on, right? I, it would be great if I had some, uh, you know, the, the horoscope news in front of me. Uh, but yes, you're right. Um, Let's talk about it next week because I'm going to explain a very important fact uh, for astrologers or uh, the astrology fans. If you are reading your sign, if you are just pulling up your uh, used to be newspaper, but nowadays I think it's your favorite app and read your horoscope based on these 12 constellations. 
how these 12 constellations got into there and how they are associated with these calendar markers, the month names, how to find your sign and and let's let's talk all about those next week. Would that be okay, Jim, with you? I think you just you just took work away from me. That's that's stuff I, I usually have to work on. But uh mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. Let's all right. do it. So if everyone wants to learn about zodiac and astrology. All right, great. So um we covered North Star today, next week on YouTube. Same here, same time, same location. Uh, we are going to talk about astrology oh. and the 5,000 years <laughs> history of astrology. And uh, we are also on Facebook on Wednesdays, 1 p.m. with different topic. Uh, Jim will be with me over there too. Definitely. But um, are there any questions uh, in the chat, Jim? I we, yeah, we had, we had some uh, very interesting ones. Uh or at least one that really stood out to me from Lamia. Uh, uh -huh. She asks, um, or Lamia asks, very interesting. It's clear um, Earth has changed its axis. Can you explain why it's changing? Well, why it is changing is uh, because of all the, the gravitational disturbances. Like we are um, in, a, in a system, solar system, that have a lot of you know, the, the, the planets and uh, the, the sun, and also there is a moon around. Uh, and the, 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 this type of change, the, the wobble of the axis, is uh, the, the many factors responsible, but I would say that the primary one is the moon. Because as the moon rotates around, uh, around the Earth, it is uh, uh, making a great gravitational disturbance that results in tides and, and and along with that the it also wobbles the wobbles the earth so uh, there is a the, this motion is the this wobble is called precession uh, moon also has a secondary effect too it also causes the the, the in shorter amount of zigzags which they are called nutations of the axis so if we uh, just uh, draw the path of the the axis wobble uh, the moon, we will see that the moon has a lot of effects, and also you know there is the sun and the the, the all the other planets, all with all the gravitational um, effects combined, uh, the the axes shift themselves. Uh, so this is this is common and seen on every planet. So, uh, one other point that Olivia made that uh, just just a little bit ago was uh, in regards to how the constellations change over uh -huh. time. Um, the comment that that was left was maybe Ursa Major looked like a bear uh, one day. Well, the constellations have not changed much uh, since the Greek astronomers uh, identified some of the bright star patterns and uh, the constructed constellations. Uh, the constellations are just a group of stars. Well, Greek astronomers were just uh, thinking to, uh, maybe just we can draw lines between the bright stars and they look like a shape. And what, what's the, the purpose of making a shape? Well, they use it as an address system. Because the you know they notice that uh, the objects among the stars are uh, moving across the stars like there are the, those are planets and the sun, and to identify the locations of each object in the sky, they need an address system. And uh, yeah, the, there's a coordinate system they can use, but the coordinates are not practical because if if I tell you immediately, you know, uh, the object is uh, thirty degrees high from the horizon and the 45 degrees through towards the west uh, you need to find your reference point first and then uh, maybe use some devices to like sextant to measure the, the degrees in the sky the constellations are easy uh, because you just say you know look at this constellation uh, and and the, when the constellations were constructed and the, the patterns are drawn and accepted globally, uh, we are not looking at a very long time in the history. Uh, for that reason, uh, the, 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 they are they didn't change. But let's talk about Ursa Major and uh, the Ursa Minor. Was the question for Ursa Major or Ursa Minor? Ursa Major doesn't matter. I mean, the same yeah. are known as bears. One is called, known as Big Bear and one is known as Little Bear. Again. 
uh, this is coming from actually the constellations uh, different namings. Uh, there's an astronomical naming of constellations. In the astronomical naming, yeah, it's a scientific naming, uh, we call uh, UMA or Ursa Major. Uh, Ursa Major is, is, I think it's coming from the Latin language. Ursa means big, uh, no, major means big, Ursa means bear. Uh, so, <laughs> and that makes the common name. The common name um, is, uh, well, the constellations may be different with the common names. Uh, and when we look at, when we say, for example, Big Dipper, that's an asterism name. Asterisms names are completely different. Maybe I think we need more coverage or different coverage for uh, the star naming and constellation naming. But Ursa Major is uh, what we call common name or public name of the constellation. And it has more stars in it. When, you, when, it's, when it is drawn. And in that drawing, uh, again, it's an imagination. Uh, people imagined a bear in that constellation. That's why it's, they, they called it Big Bear. Your imagination may be different. And, and in, in some of the constellations, uh, I'm even thinking like what they were thinking when they named this constellation, because it doesn't look like anything at all. Uh, but again, uh, maybe my imagination is not great enough to see those um, you know, bears or um, the, the, the Libra, the scale, for example, or the, the scorpion, uh, the Scorpius, the scorpion. Those Some are all imagination. You, can, uh, you, you may identify them as different things. Uh, what I'm uh, having trouble to you know, imagine is the, the Sagittarius, the centaur, uh, because it's a you know, uh, half man and half horse. Uh, what I see is, I, I see a teapot shape. It makes a lot more sense to me. So, next week, we are going to be here. We'll talk about some great stuff. Very much. All right. That's all it right. for today, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. See you all next week. Definitely.